In this video, we will go through an understanding and application of immediate and direct addressing modes. The specification lists two addressing modes you need to be familiar with, immediate and direct, and we'll go through those first. In the Beyond the Specification section, we'll also look at indexed and indirect addressing. So first of all, let's have an overview of what an instruction is. Once an instruction has been fetched, it then needs to be decoded before it can be executed. This process involves splitting the binary that makes up the instruction into an opcode and an operand. Here we're assuming a word size of 8 bits, where the first 4 bits represent the opcode, and the last 4 bits represent the operand. For example, the instruction 00011010 is made up of the opcode, the first four bits, and the operand, the last four bits. So what does this instruction mean? Well, in this instruction set for a fictional processor, the opcode 0001 is the machine instruction to add. So we know this instruction needs to add something, but what? The operand contains the value 1010, well in binary 1010 equals 10. If we're using immediate addressing, the instruction literally means add 10 to the accumulator. As a line of assembly code, the instruction would be add 10. However, by utilising different addressing modes, the operand 1010 in this case can take on different meanings. So first let's look at immediate addressing, sometimes also called an immediate operand. In this case, the value in the address part of the instruction is the value to be used. So the memory does not need to be searched to find the required value. In essence, the instruction add 10 literally means add 10, not add the value in address location 10. As you probably guessed, the alternative is direct addressing. Here, the value in the address part of the instruction is a reference to the address in memory where the required value is located. So in this case, the instruction add 10 means, go and find whatever is in memory address location 10 and add it to the accumulator. So for example, we'd go to memory address 10, and in there we find the value 14. So this would actually add 14 to the accumulator. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are immediate and memory addressing? Now there are the two addressing modes you need to know for the exam. If you'd like to know about two other common forms, pop your pen down and watch the rest of this video. So we've also got indexed and indirect addressing. With indirect addressing, the value in the address part of the instruction is a reference to a memory location that contains the address in memory where the required value is located. So in this case, the instruction add 10 means go and find memory address location 10 and there you'll find another address. Go to this address and add what you find to the accumulator. So for example, we'd go to memory address 10, and in there we find the value 14. We therefore go to memory address 14, and in there we find the value 169, which is what we actually add. This mode of addressing memory is incredibly useful, as it means larger address ranges can be used to reference data and instructions. Let's go into that last point in a bit more detail. In this fictional computer, we have an 8-bit word with 256 bits of main memory. 2 to the power of 8 means we have a maximum of 256 combinations of zeros and ones, from 0 to 255, as shown here. But remember, we only have 4 bits available for the operand to supply a memory address. Well, 2 to the power of 4 is a maximum of 16 unique memory locations, 0 to 15. It's a lot smaller. If we could only ever use direct addressing, 
there'd be no point putting any more physical memory into the machine beyond four bits, as we could not physically reference the memory locations beyond the 15th address, address 1111. That wouldn't be an issue if we could use all eight bits to store an address, as the number of locations we could then address would be 256. Of course, there are many 8-bit locations where we could store the real address, and they're all in memory. With indirect addressing, the address in the instruction is the address where we'll find the real address of the required data. That's why indirect addressing can be so useful, because it means the larger addresses in memory can be used to store data. It gets around the limitation in this example of only having a 4-bit storage space for the memory address in the operand. Finally, indexed addressing. Imagine the contents of an array of 100 items must be added together. If the first item in the array is in location 10, we would need instructions such as add 10, add 11, add 12, all the way through to add 109. Essentially, we would need to use the same instruction a hundred times. It is more efficient to use an index register. The index register is set to zero, so the first value is taken from 10 plus zero. After this is done, the index register is incremented and the same instruction is used again. This time the address is 10 plus one. That is why an array needs to be stored in contiguous memory locations. We store the address for element 0 of the array in the index register and then increment. So in this example, add 10 means go and find memory address location 10 plus the value in the index register, which is 3. Go to memory address 13, 10 plus 3 and add 41. 